Hello everyone, welcome to Cloud Part Shala. In this video series, we are discussing Linux fundamentals. Uh, today, we would be continuing our video series on the basic Linux commands. And uh, this is uh, part 3 of the video wherein we would be discussing various Linux commands like cat, cp, move, and ls. So let's start by looking into the first command that is ls. ls is nothing but for listing the files and the directories in our system. That is running it without a flag or a parameter will show the current working directory contents that includes the list of files and directories. To see other directories contents type ls followed by the desired path for example if we have to view uh, the files or subfolders that are there inside documents folder all we have to do is say ls and the actual path of the folder that would be home username documents and this would then provide us a list of all the files and subfolders that are there or subdirectories that are there inside the documents folder some other options uh, that we can also use with the ls command is uh, ls r which would list all the files in the subdirectory ls a would show even the hidden files that are available in the directory that is any file or any folder that is starting with a dot in linux is a hidden file or a directory ls lh would show the file size in an easily readable format such as MBs, GBs and terabytes. So these are the various options that we have in LS. So the first command that we would be looking into is the LS command. For this I would be logging into my Ubuntu machine. Once that I have logged into the Ubuntu machine I clear the screen and the first command that we were looking at is LS. Now if you see that uh, I have a bunch of files and folders over here uh, which stands for the ls. Now I, uh, what I could do is if I do ls hyphen l this would give me a list of all the files and folders that is over here. Now uh, over here this would give me a grid view of the entire thing wherein if I do an ls hyphen l this would give me a list a proper list of the files. Now if you see, uh, we uh, though we are getting more, most of the information related to the files, we don't get the size of the file in a readable format. So what we can always do is uh, click on ls-h and we would get the details or the size of the file in human readable format that in this case is megabytes or mp. So this is all we have. What we can also do is if I do ls a, so this would give me a list of all the hidden files also. Now, if this is difficult, what we can do is click on ls la, which would actually give us these hidden files and folders which are available over here. So, if you see, Ansible has created a hidden directory inside this uh, home folder, whereas I also have some hidden files named as dot profile dot bash rc and other related things with me so this is the list command that we were discussing let's look at the next command the next command is cat cat is nothing but concatenate or cat is one of the most frequently used linux commands that you would use on a day-to-day -day basis it lists combines and writes file content to the standard output that is the terminal. To run the cat command, we typically type cat followed by the file name and its extension. For example, if you have to read a file with uh, file.txt, you would say cat file.txt and this would give us the content of the file. Now, this is the most important command that you would definitely be using on multiple occasions uh, in your Linux journey. Some other ways in which you can use the cat command is cat and you could create a file that is 
by giving up an arrow and saying file name.txt this would actually create a file cat file name 1 file name 2 can be sent into file name 3 so what would exactly happen is the content of file 1 and file 2 would be sent into file 3 that is it merges both file 1 and file 2 and stores the output of that in file 3 what we can also do is uh, instead of using cat what I can say is TAC wherein it would display the content in the reverse order so this is the default uh, commands or the options that we have with cat available for us to our display command that we would be looking into is the cat command so cat command is used to check the content of the file so let's see what's there in text.txt I see that we only have one command one line of the character which says uh, main and let's also see what's there in the second command and this is uh, this is test 2 so this is what we have uh, what I can do is uh, test 2 I could send this output to test test.txt so what this would actually do is append the file text.txt uh, it's not test but text.txt and what it would do is if I now do a uh, text.txt this would actually give us both the contents which we have already here so this is how we can redirect the output of one file into the other file now if you see I would be having a separate file as well which is text test 2 but uh, our primary focus was uh, text to txt. The other thing that we can definitely do over here is uh, play around with the content of the files. Uh, if I do a uh, tag which is for reading the stuff in a reverse order, I could get the exact details in a line by line reverse order. So this would not give us uh, alphanumeric uh, reversal but it would basically be reading the last line first and the first line last at the top. So that is the tag command for us. Now cat command is very useful uh, if you want to read any system files or any system related stuff that is uh, any system D files or any system services this would be the best a command that are disposable to understand the basics of it. If I have to go into the SSD service, which is sshd.service, uh, I definitely would need sudo privileges to read this, so I would go with this, and you would basically be getting uh, the details of the file. So I guess I have given the wrong password, so let's try with punch in the password again and see if I get to read the content of the file so if you see this is what the SS, sshd.service file looks like and this is the content of this file so cat is very useful to understand what exactly the details are of the file and this would actually help us a lot the next command that we would be looking at is copy to use copy uh, we use cp command to copy files or directories or their content and take a look at the following use cases to copy one of the file from the current directory to another enter cp followed by the file name and the destination directory the examples that follow for the cp command are cp uh, we could give file name uh, and the folder in which we want to copy the file what we can also do is if you want to copy multiple files we could say cp file1 file2 file3 and give the destination where the for file has to be copied to so this would copy all the files into the new directory that we have given to copy the content of a file to a new file in the same directory enter cp followed by the source file and the destination file so if you have to give enter if you have to copy the details of the content from file 1 into a new file that is file 2 
all you have to do is cp file 1.txt to file 2.txt so this would basically copy all the content from one file to the other what we can also do is uh, if you have to copy the entire directory uh, you can pass a flag by saying capital R hyphen R flag before typing the source directory followed by the destination directory so what we could say is cp hyphen capital R we could provide the starting directory the source directory and we could provide the final directory to where we want it to be copied this is generally used for taking backup of the entire folder structure or the file system. So hyphen R is for recursive mode of copying. This would allow us to copy both the files and the folders seamlessly. So now let's look at the copy command. Now copy command is very useful if we have to copy files and folders. If I have to copy text or txt into Texting.txt. All I have to do is type cp the source file and the destination file, and this would now copy the file into a new file for me. What I could do is give cat and do this, and this would probably give me the details of the file. Now if uh, let's see uh, what is the content of my temp directory over here. So if I say temp. You see that I only have four files. Now, if you want me to copy texting.txt into the temp folder, all I have to do is type cp, the name of the file, and then the destination folder where I have to copy it. And this should allow me to copy the file over to that location. Now, if I look at the content of the file, it would be exactly the same, wherein I would have all the details of the file now uh, what we can also do is copy the content copy the directories itself now if you see uh, cpb10 and cpb labs is actually directories that we have so i could go into cp labs and actually show you the content of the file so this is a subdirectory structure now if i have to copy the entire folder cpb labs from this location into temp all I have to do is copy this now here you would see that I'm getting a permission denied error that could probably be because uh, I don't have permissions on the CPB lab folder so what I can definitely do is say sudo cp hyphen r cpb cp cp labs and I could say slash temp and this would actually be requesting and changing all the details and what I can do is do an ls hyphen l for tmp and I would get my cp labs over here the next command that we have is move move is almost so similar to that of copy where in in the cp command there is the source file is left as it is wherein in the move command the file is renamed or moved to a different directory the primary use of the mv command is to move or rename the files and directories additionally it doesn't reproduce or produce any output upon execution simply typing move followed by the file name and the destination directory would do the job wherein we just have to provide the file name and the destination directory wherein we want to move the file now, if you have to move or rename the file we could also give move uh, move file 1 and file 2 and that would rename the file from 1 to 2 for example if you want to move the file file name.txt to the documents directory all you have to give is move provide the name of the file and the destination directory to which it has to be moved now it can also as it can also be used to rename the files all we have to do is move mv the old file name and the new file name and this would rename the file that we want the next command that we would be looking into is the move command so what we can do is if i have to rename uh, texting dot uh, something into text dot txt in the temp directory 
all I can do is click on say move the source file to the destination file and this would give me this would rename the file for me from texting to text also if I have to change the uh, change the name of the folder from CP labs to CP labs underscore maybe backup BSEK this would actually change that and give me this folder structure so this is the move command that we could extensively use if we have to rename the files or move rename a file or a folder these are the commands that we wanted to discuss in today's session wherein we have discussed basically four commands that is list copy move and cat along with cat we have also seen the tac command wherein this would be giving us the output in a reverse order i hope you like this short video please like and share the video with your friends and colleagues who are looking to learn linux from the scratch if you're not subscribed to the channel and would like to get more future videos like this we strongly encourage you to subscribe to the channel and hit on the bell notification so that you get future videos related to these topics thank you so much for watching keep have a great day